ball decide. Let the players on the court make that play. Bates lobs it up. Shaw throws it up for the tie. He connects. Is this a situation where you go for a, a quick two and foul? Or a quick two, try for the steal, and then foul if you don't get it, or do you try for the tie? Yeah, there is time for that, Scott. And, and what I can see happening here is uh, I like that one. You know, I like to go quick. I like to move the ball fast here and really – you know, force the issue and force it quickly. Because if you miss with 20 seconds over the clock, game's not over. You know, you can go back and foul, you can hope first and miss it. The other thing that you can do is you can run down to a quick three, and then if that happens to not miss, you can go back to foul. And there's just options here, and I think Coach Haney has had a lot of experience in close games this season. Burns throws it up, gathered. Rachel misses the layup. The second opportunity goes. Jay, you down by one. Hooper still going. And a great job there by Burns to recover. Oh, trying for the steal, just foul. That, that's what's going off the bench now. 11 seconds left, that's the perfect time to do this. Great coaching right there. You know, with 11 seconds left, that's when you just want to foul. You do not want to let, you know, three seconds off the clock. A couple of subs in the game, Aaron Wilson and yeah, Alexis two, Pierce. Two sets of fresh legs here, chase some players down, and some fouls just for Burns. Gianola on the inbound. Johnson racing with it. Johnson oh. able to bleed the clock Johnson down to eight. Great speed there coming around the corner, but Aaron Wilson there. What a recovery foul. Yeah, you don't hear that one much in basketball, but what a job just to you know go all out there just to even get the hand on Johnson. Eight seconds, eight and a half left, you know, right around where you want to be to run down and try and uh, knock down a buzzer beater for either the winner or the tie. You know, at least you're in this situation. It could have been a lot worse. Yeah, you know, Rachel did a great job down there to gather the ball and throw one up, and, and, and she got it to fall and put you in the spot. First for Johnson is good. Obviously, critical free throw here for Kennesaw State. Johnson nails it. She's got 28. And the Owls use a timeout. Are you surprised about that? Because Jacksonville would have had to scramble with eight seconds to go. And this gives them an opportunity to set up a play. I think there's been a lot of fast movement in this game, to be honest. Uh, I like the timeout there. I think a lot of these broken plays have gone the way of the team that's been on offense today. And I, I like that coach. The coaching staff for this Kennesaw State team kind of realizes their defense has been the greatest at dropping back and really getting set quickly. And they go ahead, they use the timeout, and they just say, you know, well, let's put it on our turn. That's kind of what I see that as. So Agnes Baranato plans what's going to happen in the Kennesaw State huddle. And obviously, the strategy for the Owls, do you foul up by three? with this little time in the clock to send the Dolphins to the line and not even get off the three-point attempt because right now Mariah Bates and Denisha Shaw have checked back in. Those are their big three-point shooters for JU. You can take that out of the hands of the foul. You know, the way that I see it is a coach with 32 years of experience like Arenado does, she's just going on to play it out. I don't think the fouling, I don't like it. You know, eight seconds left. It's a little bit too much time, even though Johnson's done so well at burning clock. But uh, I just like to play it out, you know. Let, let the ball decide. Let the players on the court make that play. Bates lobs it up. Shaw throws it up for the tie. He connects. Possible timeout here. The Owls missed. 11 of their final 12 shots, including six of their final seven from three. Jacksonville's just got to be so proud of themselves right now. What a way to fight through adversity in this game. What a way to show your grit, your toughness, and your just team basketball won them this game. There's no doubt about that. Holding your teammates accountable to win this game. Everybody kind of urging themselves on. You saw it a lot from Bates when they were down early. Just fighting hard and fighting for a win now as the final three seconds will go off. Kennesaw State can't get one more shot. It's spinning. There's Denasia Shaw who tied the game twice in regulation. Spearheading a senior day to remember. 88-81. Dolphins win. What a victory for JU. One that maybe can propel them 
going forward towards the ASO championship. And that's just an amazing win for them. Now, you know, things play out right. They get themselves in position for second place in this conference. Huge, huge. Ju has won six of eight, and down by twelve. On, able to win today to improve his sixteen and ten, eight and five in the A Sun. They are tied for second place in the conference standings. Kennesaw State falls to twelve and thirteen, and five and eight. And just a tremendous win. Big thank you to our excellent crew in the truck, and big thank you to you for watching. We hope you enjoyed our broadcast. 80 and 81 in overtime. Dolphins beat the Owls for Mason Viner. I'm Scott Kornberg. Thanks for watching, everybody.